Oh, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. Continuing with our gases, now we're going to move to our gas laws. And our gas laws, what we're going to be looking at now is if you have a fixed amount of gas, so a known amount, we can change one variable, either pressure, temperature, or volume, and see how it affects the other ones. So we're going to look at the relationships, direct or inverse, among pressure, temperature, and volume of a gas. And we're going to be solving for all problems for pressure, temperature, and volume will be our objectives for this section. So to begin with, we're going to look at three variables. We're going to hold the amount, the amount of moles of a gas we have constant. So P for pressure, our units for pressure, atmospheres, millimeters, mercury, torr, or kilopascals are all units for pressure from our last section. Volume will either be in milliliters or liters, so V for volume. T for temperature is always in Kelvin. So we will need Celsius to go to Kelvin in order for this to work. We're going to talk about that later on. And then we're going to use our numbers 1 and 2. They're going to be kind of subscripts used to represent two different states or conditions. So basically 1 is before and 2 will be after. So how do the things change beginning to end? So our first law is Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that the volume of a gas varies inversely with pressure. So Boyle's Law, inversely, volume to pressure. So that equation set up P1, V1 times P2, V2. Inversely means if these are to stay equal to each other, if one goes up, the other must go down to keep everything equal. So when temperature and the amount of gas are held constant. So if we keep temperature the same, pressure, volume are inversely related to each other. So our graph that you'll need to sketch in, it says label X and Y. And just to roughly sketch in as pressure changes, how does the volume of the gas change? Now note that we never get volume to equal zero. This is a no. So we can't squish a gas to be zero volume. No matter how much pressure we apply to it, you can't squish a gas to be zero. So Boyle's Law pressure versus volume of a gas. Now, according to kinetic molecular theory, KMT, why does the pressure increase as the volume decreases and the temperature stays constant? So if we were to look, if we squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, temperature is constant between the three. If we squeeze, 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 every time we're squeezing, there's going to be more collisions happening the more the volume decreases, the more collisions we have. So our pressure is going to continue to move up. Our volume is going to continue to move down. So in 26, decrease in volume. Particles collide with the walls of the container more frequently, so it's going to increase pressure. So volume goes down. Pressure goes up. So a problem to work through here. The volume of a gas is 99 kilopascals at 300 milliliters, or is 300 milliliters at 99 kilopascals. If the pressure is increased to 188 kilopascals, what will be the new volume? Hint, we're always going to label the info from the variables in the equation. So we started out with our initial pressure and an initial volume and we've changed to a new volume. We are trying to find out our new pressure and we're trying to find out what the new volume is going to be. So our first step is Boyle's Law, P1 equals V1, or P1V1 times P2V2 to plug those variables in. So plugging in 99 kilopascals times 300 milliliters is equal to 188 kilopascals times volume 2. We can divide each side by 180 kilopascals, so our units cancel, units cancel, leaving us with just our milliliter unit. So our math, 
99 times 300 divided by the 188 gives us our volume in milliliters. Now sig fig wise, we could drop off our end to round up. But as we're going, volume of a gas is directly or inversely related to pressure. Our second law is Charles' law. Charles' law states that the volume is directly related to the Kelvin's temperature. So volume and temperature are directly related. So this equation is set up. If volume goes up, temp must go up to keep us equal. So if one increases, the other one increases. Now, we're going to be talking and using Kelvin, 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 Kelvin. So if you ever see Celsius, we need to move to Kelvin. A couple reasons why. Volume Celsius, if we were to directly look or extrapolate our data, doesn't get us to a zero, zero mark. If we switch to Kelvin, we actually get down to a point on the graph that would be a zero zero volume temperature. This is that absolute zero. Now unfortunately volume doesn't actually get to zero. That's only a theory but extrapolating the information that would be what happened. It doesn't actually get to that point. So our Kelvin scale, part two of our equation, Kelvin is equal to 273 plus whatever Celsius temperature we're in. So that allows us to move over to where that zero point would be on the graph. Now that's only a theory we can't actually get there. So the idea is if we increase temperature you want to keep pressure the same. If we increase the temperature we're going to increase the volume. Particles are moving faster they're moving faster in order for them to stay at the same temperature with collisions. They need a much larger space to work in. So temperature and volume, if pressure remains constant, temperature and volume are directly related. So why do we need the temperature Kelvin scale? It's based on absolute zero. It's only a theory. We can't actually get the volume of a gas to be zero. It's only a theory. And then it's going to show us direct proportions with volume. Double temp, we double the volume. And there's no negative numbers, so we won't get any negative volumes. So that's the reason we need that Kelvin scale. Now, according to our KMT, kinetic molecular theory, why does the volume increase as the temperature increases and pressure remains constant? So just talked about this. If we increase our temperature, in order to keep pressure the same, the volume needs to increase. So as we move around, if these particles start pushing more, the volume or piston, we need it to move up in order to keep that pressure or the collisions between the side walls of the container the same. So increase in temperature, faster particles, more collisions, more internal pressure, but because pressure is going to remain constant, the volume increases of the gas, and so our pressure remains the same so that we keep the same pressure, so volume had to increase. Just the opposite, if temperature decreases, then the pr our volume is also going to decrease. So our second problem, gas of uh, 89 degrees Celsius occupies a volume of 0.67 liters. At what Celsius temperature will cause the volume to increase to 1.12 liters? Now right away, labeling out our parts, temperature 1, volume 1, temperature 2, is what we're looking for and we have volume 2. Now the problem is we can't be in Kelvin or we have to be in Kelvin so 273 plus the 89 gets us to Kelvin. So our equation volume 1 over temp 1 equals volume 2 over temp 2 to plug in our units solving for temperature 2 we have our volume 1 temp 1 volume 2 so to solve for temperature 2, we're going to rearrange our equation. So we've just switched our equation around to solve for temperature 2. Now as we solve for temperature 2, we'll need to divide back so that volume can cancel our volume. And then our math, 1.12 times 362 divided by 
equals 605 Kelvin. Now it did ask for it in Celsius, so if we were to minus 273, it would get us back into Celsius. So Charles' law is going to be how temperature and volume are related to one another. And our last one is Guy Lussac's principle. Guy Lussac's principle states that the pressure and temperature are directly related. Pressure and temperature directly related to one another. So our equation, if pressure goes up, temperature must go up to keep everything equal. So directly related to one another. Now why does this happen? According to the KMT, why does pressure increase or the temperature increase as the volume is constant? If we increase temperature, we've said that the particles are going to move faster. If they're going to move faster, we get more collisions. And if we get more collisions, then we're going to get more pressure because that's what pressure is, the amount of collisions. So our temperature increases, so does our pressure. Increase in temperature, faster particles, more collisions, more pressure. Now, as we're working on that idea, graph-wise, I think we lost our graph. If we were to look temperature versus pressure. As one increases, the other one would increase directly among one another. So temperature, pressure, directly related to one another. As one increases, the other one would increase. And our last problem to look at, the pressure of an automobile tire is 1.88 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. What will be the pressure if the temperature increases to 37 degrees Celsius? So our first step, going from temperature and pressure, we know that we have a pressure, 1.88, temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and we're moving to a new temperature, so we need to find our new pressure. So our first step is, can't be in Celsius, we have to be in Kelvin, so we need to remember adding that 273 number to get to Kelvin. Now once we're in Kelvin, pressure times temperature, or pressure divided by temperature of 1 equals pressure temperature divided by 2. So we can substitute in our pressures and temperatures. We can rearrange. We'll need to move our Kelvin temperature to the opposite side. So to switch that over, temperatures divided by temperatures. Kelvins will cancel out and we're left with about a pressure of 1.96 atmospheres. So the pressure has increased when the temperature increases. That will end our initial gas laws ideas. Tomorrow we'll start into combined gas laws.